Welcome back to part 3 of my Mythic Mobs for Starters tutorial playlist. Today we're going to be covering the essential mob options for your mod. Let me go ahead and copy and paste this in here. And we'll be covering every little thing that is involved with it. So first option I have set here is always show name. You can set this to true if you would like. By default, Minecraft will only show the display name, as shown here, above a mob whenever you look at it. But if you set it to true, then its name tag will always be active. So we're going to go ahead and set that to true. Next, we are going to have a couple things here, one of which I forgot to add and we'll be adding in right here. Okay, so first off is prevent random equipment. This is basically only necessary for any undead type mobs. Whenever you see a mob in the wild, you'll notice sometimes that they have maybe a shovel in their hand or a sword or they're wearing armor. Well, this is going to prevent them from even having the chance to spawn in with any of that. This is very important to set to true if you're making some sort of boss or any kind of powerful mob that you want to be fully custom. You can keep it false if, say, you're making a zombie that is just maybe a more powerful variant of zombie. Next, prevent item pickup. We're going to go ahead and set this to true. The reason why is because by default, Minecraft has undead mobs pick up any items that they find on the ground. At least weapons and armor. So let's see what happens. As you can see, he picked up the axe that I threw to him, because it can be used as a weapon, so he will be using it as a weapon. Let me go ahead and reload here. Let me uh, kill him off as well. And respawn him. So, now if I give myself an axe... Diamond, axe, one. If I throw it at him, you'll notice that he is no longer going to pick it up. Next, we have prevent other drops. This means this will prevent any mobs from dropping whatever they normally drop in vanilla Minecraft. For example, if I were to kill the zombie right now, he would drop rotten flesh. But if I turn on prevent other drops, he would not drop anything at all. This includes experience points as well. Next is despawn. This basically means if there are no players within the chunk or chunk radius, I can't remember which personally, it will not despawn if set to false. So if I were to set it to false, fly very far away, he would still be alive if this was set to false. If it was set to true, he would disappear entirely. If you are making a boss, it's kind of recommended to set this to false, unless of course you want it to be in an instance where it's spawned in and disappears if not killed. But generally, you're going to want to keep it false uh, because most bosses are really powerful and you want players to be able to come back and kill them. Next is Persistent. All that Persistent means is that it will be immune to admin commands except for ones targeted specifically at the your mob. So if I set this to true and I reload, if I type in MMM kill all like I did earlier, you'll notice that he is not being affected by it. This is because he is now immune to the kill all command. However, if I were to say MMM kill legion, he would be removed because it was directly targeted at him. You'll know what mobs are affected because, depending on what you're, what, uh, depending on what you type, they will be highlighted in red. Next is invincible. This one speaks for itself. This basically determines whether or not your mob will take damage. I'm gonna set this to zero for when we start testing other things. So, we're gonna go ahead and keep this to false because, in my opinion, there's no real reason why you would want it to be set to true 
unless for whatever reason you decide to make an NPC out of a mythic mob. Next is knockback resistance. This works on a scale of 0 to 1. 1 being 100%, 0 meaning 0%. Now this isn't a percentage of how much it resists knockback, this is a percentage of how likely it is to resist knockback. So say if we have it set to 1, if I spawn him in here, you can see he's not being knocked back whatsoever. Do know that enchantments will hit through this. So if I had knockback on my axe, uh, of course, so let me give myself a sword instead. Ooh, that's, uh, that's way too, I don't need 64 in one stack. Okay, so, as you can see, oh, well, it looks like it was fixed. Okay, so knockback one means he will not take any knockback whatsoever. It should apply the same way with a bow, but just to test it, we are going to do that. I, bow, one, enchant, punch, uh, we'll give it two, just to see. I, arrow, one. There we go. And, okay. So, it works with any type of melee weapon, I do believe, but um, any sort of projectiles will still knock him back. Well, I'll show you a way to deal with this later on. Let's go ahead and kill him here. As you can see, he also did not drop any rotten flesh or experience orb. Just for proof of example, when we set his prevent other drops option to true. So, this uh, percentage here, you can do it to two decimal places. So 0 0.5 would be 50%. 0 0.55 would be 55%, 51%, 52, 67, 33, or 22. It, it all depends on what you want it to be set to, but basically, if you want to do an exact percentage, whatever two numbers you put behind the decimal will be counted as the percent, as if you were looking at it like this instead of this. Next is max combat distance. This is how f this is going to determine how far or how close we have to be in order to do damage to our mob. Generally, I find 30 to be fine, which reminds me, there is another thing that goes hand in hand with that, which is going to be called follow range. But okay, so max combat distance, let's talk about that. Let's go ahead and set it to 10. So I'm going to go ahead and reload here. MMM spawn legion. Oops, I forgot the mob part there. Okay, so now we have our mob. There he is. And we can do damage to him just fine so long as we're right here. But if I back up all the way out here, one, and I try hurting him with an arrow, it's just going to bounce right off of him and not do any damage at all. That is because we are farther away than the 10 block distance that we specified. But if we get closer, it does damage to him now. Next is going to be follow range. By default, this is set to 20, or whatever your mob is. Things like zombies have a very high follow range, whereas other mobs such as wolves and skeletons do not. But you can specify the range. I personally think it's good to keep the follow range equal to whatever your max combat distance is, so that way your mob can only take damage if it's within the range that it's even following you in the first place. For us, that would be 10. But for the sake of anything else we might be testing, let's go ahead and set it to 20. Next is your mob's movement speed. This is going to determine how fast your mob moves. By default, all, move, all mobs move at their own respective movement speed of 0 0.2. You can mess with this, however it's highly recommended that you do not mess with this first decimal place, or this first number in front of the decimal, as that will cause it to move so incredibly fast that you it will become unfightable. So just like knockback resistance, it's all going to be behind this decimal right here. 
So here's its default, but you can set it to things such as 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, uh, 50, which is getting really high. But I'm just going to go and show you for now what 0.4 would look like. So we go ahead and reload it. Let me kill him here. And let me spawn him in again. Do know that whenever you mess with mob options, you will always have to kill your mob, reload, and respawn it. Because it will not update the mob options whenever you spawn it in. Or whenever you reload. But now he has a movement speed of 0.4. And as you can see, he is significantly faster than he was before. I highly recommend sticking to about 0.25 or 0.3 for most mobs, but you will find that movement speeds vary because some mobs naturally are faster than others. Let's go ahead and kill him off here. Next one is no AI. This basically means he either will move and look around or he will not. I will have another tutorial later on discussing what AI is. but. For the sake of right now, we're going to go ahead and set it to true, reload, and spawn him in. Now that I have his AI turned off, you'll see that he doesn't take any sort of knockback whatsoever. He does not look around, he does not attack, he doesn't do anything at all. AI basically, essentially all it is, is what tell, like what dictates the mob's movement, where it moves, why it moves there. And it also dictates what the mob is going to do, such as melee attack uh, players, which is the default for zombies, uh, walk around, look around, uh, etc. There's a big list of them, I'll have the link in the description for that if you want to play around with that. Um, but essentially that's all that no AI is, it just disables them entirely. This is helpful for if you're wanting to test new skills or uh, area of effect abilities, do know, however, though, when you are messing with skills and you have this enabled, if it has any sort of at target or actually, yeah, just at target uh, trigger, it will never work because it does not have a target when no AI is set to true. The last thing we're going to do, this isn't essential, but I find it very important if you have custom mobs with skins on them, like, you know, custom skins. The last option is called silent, which is going to set it to true. That should speak for itself. All it's going to do is make your mob not make noises. So, MMM kill legion, I already reloaded. MMM spawn legion. You'll find that in most of my other tutorials, the mob is always set to silent. That's because personally having the mob breathe down my neck while I'm trying to talk annoys me. But you don't have to set it to silent if you don't want. If you do set it to silent, you will not get any noises from your mob whatsoever. That's all I have for you guys in this tutorial. Make sure to stay tuned for more tutorials following this essential playlist. I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.